All right, hey guys, welcome again to Fire Alarms and Such, and this is SK5208 Test 60, Duct Detector. Why is that? Because I now finally have a duct detector on here. So this actually came from where I work. I was able to uh, get a new fire system installed. There was a 20-year-old ADT focus system that needed to go, and so I was able to snag some of the devices from there, and this is actually a duct detector that used to be where I work, and I was able to take it home and... I had a key switch for it already, and so now it's hooked up to my SK5208. Um, it's working under Ohio Revised Code, meaning that when this goes into alarm, it'll actually just trigger a uh, supervisory on the panel and then shut down an air handler, but I have no air handler to shut down, so it doesn't do anything other than initiate a non latching supervisory on the SK5208. And I do have a like four foot sampling tube for this, but I'm trying to figure out a way to cut it down nicely to be able to like actually shoot smoke in it because I've tried, but it's, it takes a lot to get it to reach the detector. So today we are just going to be uh, key testing it and then we can also do the uh, button test on the front. We aren't going to be putting any smoke into it yet, but I'm going to try and figure out a way to do that at some point. But if we go up here, we do have a Simplex MS-301C Canadian single action pull station. Really the only thing Canadian about it is that the instructions on the inside are also in French. Come up over here, we have a new device. Um, it is a Gentex GHSLF110R. This is a low frequency sounder strobe at flashing at 110 km dollar, running on Gentex sync from the sound night panel, doing temporal three and silence bullhorn. If we come all the way down here, we have a Wheelock LLH FS, I'll have to see, I think I said that wrong. Um, low frequency sounder strobe, this is um, temporal three at 110 candela, LED, this is an LED strobe in white, and it's on Wheelock sync from the panel, so it will be doing um, selective silence. Come down here, this is another pole station I was able to snag from work, it is an ADT BG12L, dual action key locking pole station, rebrand of the Firelight BG12, and we'll be pulling that today. Make sure I got that model number right. That was the LLFHS, if that's what I said. I can't remember. Coming up here, we have the uh, System Sensor I I3 series. This is the uh, two wire relay with uh, heat version, and we will be solo testing that today. Um, coming over here, we have the Pyrochem 551167 dual action pull station. We'll be pulling that today. And then up here we have the Wheelock WMT-24, I think that's right, the 117 candela strobe only. It says fire on the sides, and that will be flashing today. If you guys want one of these, I'll actually have two up, two of these up for sale available on my store. So, I think, oh, and then uh, one other thing that we will be pulling today, I forgot is the Life Safety by Mercom MS501 single action pull station over here. And we will be doing that as well. So, to begin, I say we start with the Simplex MS-301C. So, in three, two, one. use our external silence we'll go ahead and reset the pull station this is just a uh, tool reset pull station there is no key for it so you just stick your tool in push it forward and lock the tab up underneath and then we can go ahead and reset from the panel and we will actually use the uh, firefighters key on it and we'll do a reset okay everything's resetting so you can hear this alarm goes off first and then the Wii lock follows after that. But both are able to do select silence due to the sync protocols that this panel does. So it's nice, I don't need to do a module for these. Okay, panels are set. Let's do the ADT BG12. 
L, BG 12 L. All right, in three, two, one. So I'm sure you probably heard that Wheelock strobe is kind of raspy. That seems to be a common thing. I know a couple other people who have the same device that also say it's kind of raspy, rattly, no matter kind of what power source you put on it. Um, I think that's just the nature of the alarm. And we can go ahead and reset the panel. Well, here we can actually go ahead and uh, smoke saber test the uh, smoke detector right above us. Wait for that to reset. Let's make sure our smoke detector is one single green light. Yep, it is. All right, here we go. put a reset in the panel and then uh, we will come over and do the pyrochem 551167 and uh, do some controls from the enunciator all right here we go So we'll do science from the indensiator. See that's flashing away. Try and find my cap 15 key. There it is. Go ahead and reset this. Go ahead and reset with the passcode. Panel is resetting. Let me go ahead and pull the Mercom station over here. All right. In three, two, one. and do a reset and then we can go ahead and uh, play around with this duct detector. So as you can see there is um, a little bit of wiring inside that's going uh, from this box with the key switch in it and then that so this is taken from the panel a 24 volt power supply and then as well as an alarm zone coming off of our alarm contact and then our supervisory contact there is uh, it will put the panel in trouble if like you know you take the cover off or the head's missing or the head's dirty and uh, we have a status light up here with some different status indicators it does but I say we go ahead and put this in a supervisory just grab my shark key and key switch let's go ahead and put it in and uh, since this is being powered by technically an external power supply even though it's power supply within the panel uh, you do need this key switch. I guess you don't need it. You can do it from right here, but you do need the panel will not reset this detector when it turns the smoke power off because this is being powered by a separate power supply. So you do need to either press that to reset it or turn the key to reset it. So 
let's let's get a supervisory. In three, two, one. See everything turns red. And then we get a really anticlimactic supervisory. So if supervisory on zone nine has my duct detector. So if we turn this to off, take the key out, you can see it does nothing. But if I put the key in and turn it to reset, it resets our duct detector. I set it as a non-latching supervisory. So now we have a system normal. And then, so say if you wanted to, uh, if you didn't want the key switch and you just had the button up here, if you go ahead and press and hold that, it'll put the detector into alarm. So having an alarm again, we are getting a supervisory. There's our supervisory. And if you press it once, we got our reset and everything goes back to normal. So that's kind of an interesting piece. Um, I do hope to at some point be able to figure out a way to get a sampling tube that works because I have no airflow, so it takes an incredible amount of solo to move it through the sampling tube up to the detector since I have nothing to force the air to the detector, which I want to hold off on doing tests with that because otherwise I'm just going to blow through all my testing smoke doing it. Um, but otherwise, I think we can just now do a NAG test from this key switch, which this one still does the panel reset up here, and then when you turn it to the left, it does a supervisory with all four NACs going, and it's a non-latching supervisory. So, thank you guys for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day. <laughs>